Hi all, in the previous video we had learned about this very interesting method of supervised learning called decision trees where you do a process of binary classification or a multi-class classification by forming these hierarchical structures called trees and the way you decide the hierarchy is by using the concept of entropy, information gain or what is called the Gini index. Now although decision trees have several advantages which were listed in the previous video, they also suffer from two important disadvantages. One is that they are prone to overfitting and the second is that they are very unstable due to their hierarchical nature. Now as we know the problem of overfitting essentially means that your algorithm has a low bias and a high variance. As it turns out, both these disadvantages can be taken care of by using what are called as random forest algorithm. So how does random forest take care of high variance? We know from probability theory that if you let's say have a set of random variables x1, x2, x3 and so on up to xn which are all iid with mean mu and standard deviation sigma and then if you uh, have another random variable y which was x1 plus x2 and so on plus xn and you divide that by n then it follows from what is called the law of large numbers that as your n goes to infinity your y will tend to mu which means that the standard deviation of y will tend to zero. So this is a standard technique to reduce variance in probability theory that you take a average of many many random variables and then that average will tend to the mean of the individual random variables and the standard deviation or the variance of your new random variable will tend to zero. So this is the primary inspiration for this method in machine learning known as bagging. So bagging is a short form for bootstrap aggregating. So essentially what we do in bagging is that we take many different decision trees and then the final outcome is a average of all these decision trees. So what does that mean? That you have initially a training data set D. Instead of forming a single decision tree, you form many many different decision trees. So there's a D1 and there's a D2 and D3 and so on there is up to dn. So d1 will lead to a prediction h1, d2 will lead to a prediction h2, d3 will lead to a prediction h3, dn will lead to a prediction hn and finally your final prediction h will be an average of all these various Prediction. So this is the basic essence of your bagging which is based on your law of large numbers. So here these different decision trees are not formed using the same data set because if that was the case then all these decision trees would be identical and there would be absolutely no advantage in taking their average in any way because it will lead to the exact same result. So the reason that these decision trees are different from each other is because they are trained on different data sets. So how do you generate that? What you do is that you take this original data set D. So let's say that the size of your D was equal to some capital N. So now what you do is that you randomly pick data points and form a new data set such that size of each 
di is still equal to capital N. What, what does that mean? How do you do that? So you have this capital N number of data points. You randomly pick any one of them and put them into let's say D1. Then again you randomly pick up any one data point from this entire data set D without removing the previously selected data, data point. So what does that mean is that in your new data set D1 or D2 or D3 the same data point could be repeating. Okay. So you pick one data point from D then you pick another data point from D then you pick another data point from D and you keep doing this till you reach the number capital N without checking for duplicates. Okay. So you do this process small n number of times so that you generate these n small n number of different data sets and then you form these different decision trees using these different data sets. One more difference that you do is that when you select the daughter node for a given node there you use only a certain subset of features okay so to find next node use only a subset of features so if there are a total number of p features in your entire data set generally you use a root p number of features for your each single decision tree algorithm so this has the advantage that it gives you the ability to handle curves of dimensionality because as we saw in the previous video that uh, you know many machine learning algorithms suffer from this curves of dimensionality uh, which means that if your input data set has many many features then finding a good predictor could become very difficult but now if you are using only root p number of features for deciding the next node in a given instance then it becomes much easier to handle even large dimensional data and because you have many many decision trees over here then even if some features get missed out in d1 they would hopefully be taken care of in d2 or d3 or some other decision tree and the hope is that if you have a large number of these decision trees and you take an average then your prediction will be quite all right now obviously because you have so many different decision trees your algorithm is definitely going to become much slower but this has several advantages some of which we have seen and some that we will see very shortly so essentially random forest is a combination of bagging on decision trees so random forest is equal to decision trees plus bagging now this method where we are using multiple machine learning algorithms and combining them in a certain way to find a new algorithm or a new predictor is broadly called ensemble learning and there are many different ways of ensemble learning but the three primary ways are one is called bagging that we just saw another is called boosting and the third one is what is called stacking so bagging we have just seen where you combine different uh, decision trees for example and take an average and that gives you a better predictor so in some sense your bagging is a parallel algorithm which means you are computing these dif different decision trees in parallel and then taking an average over all of them boosting on the other hand is a serial algorithm or a sequential algorithm so in boosting what you do is that you train your machine learning model using the given data set and then you figure out which ones are the misclassified input data points and then you focus on them you give them larger weightage and try to classify them correctly which means you rerun the machine learning training algorithm to help you in classifying these misclassified algorithms correctly so you carry out this iterative process till you reach some kind of convergence or stabilization that process is called 
boosting. Stacking is somewhat completely different, but instead of just focusing on one machine learning algorithm, you combine several different machine learning algorithm in intelligent ways to come up with a better predictor. There are other ways of doing uh, ensemble learning also, but so far we are going to focus only on uh, these three methods. So essential idea is that every single machine learning algorithm is a weak learner. But when you do ensemble learning, the final result gives a strong learner. So from a weak learner, you go to a strong learner by using this method of ensemble learning. So now we have covered uh, three important methods of supervised learning. Uh, one is logistic regression, one is support vector machine, and one is random forest. So now let's try to understand what are the relative advantages and disadvantages of these three methods. So here we have logistic regression, then we have SVM, and we also have random forest. So the first point, crucial point, is that logistic regression is essentially a linear algorithm. Okay, so as I mentioned that you can do a transformation of variables and then do logistic regression, which would be a kind of a nonlinear estimate on the original data set. But logistic regression inherently is a linear classification method. So SVM is also a linear method to begin with. But because of these kernels, it can be made into an inherently nonlinear method. Okay, so it is linear, but kernels make it nonlinear. Now, random forest is, of course, inherently nonlinear. Another important distinction and perhaps one of the most crucial distinctions is that your logistic regression gives you probability estimates which makes it very easy to interpret the result. In SVM interpretation is a bit harder and random forest is of course much harder to interpret. To the point that it is almost impossible to interpret and this is because each individual decision tree is interpretable but when you take an average then you don't really know why is it that you're getting a particular prediction especially if you have large number of decision trees to take care of. Comparatively uh, now among these SVM logistic regression and random forest SVM is definitely the fastest among the three. Logistic regression could be called fast, but random forest is definitely very, very slow. Now again, each decision tree could be fast, but again, because you have to construct many different decision trees in logistic regression, it inherently becomes slow. Now when it comes to high dimensional data, as we already know that a random forest can handle high dimensional data and that is because in each decision tree you use only a subset of the entire feature set and that's why in random forest the curse of dimensionality is not that serious a problem. Now logistic regression and SVM have have difficulty with high dimensional data. Now when it comes to outliers, logistic regression of course fails miserably. If you have outliers in logistic regression then the learning process gets totally distorted because as you saw that if you have points which lie far out in the input space then your logit function becomes very, very distorted. SVM definitely handles 
outliers much better and random forest can also handle outliers as well as noisy data and that is because we are taking an average over many many uh, decision trees and so all these problems of outliers and noisy data gets averaged out. Now when it comes to multi-class classification we already saw that SVM has issues so it is best suited for binary classification because as we saw that uh, we do not have a inherently multi-class method for SVM so if you want to do multi-class classification using SVM you have to do either a one versus rest method or a one versus one method but logistic regression can handle multi-class easily as we saw using softmax and one hot encoding and random forest definitely can handle uh, multi-class very very easily so these are some of the advantages and disadvantages of these three important supervised learning algorithms uh, that we have seen now you may ask that for a given machine learning problem which algorithm do i use and as it turns out this question does not really have a very clear answer and so generally it is advised that you try all three of them and then make a suitable choice or perhaps you could even combine all these three methods in an intelligent way to come up with the best predictor for your given machine learning problem so now in the next videos we are going to move on from these algorithms and come to what is known as artificial neural networks which are much more interesting and much more powerful than any of these methods that we have learned now of course these methods also have their own advantages and there are many situations where you still use these methods but the power of artificial neural networks is that they can be generalized to a much wider set of problems and they also form the basis of what is called deep learning which has taken the AI community by storm. So till then, stay connected.